In the previous video, I mentioned that we were now going to move on to the retopology stage of this tutorial series. However, there have been some new improvements to the sculpting brushes in surface mode whenever you're working in the voxel workspace of 3D Coat. As you may know already from the previous videos, I mentioned that you have two different modes that you can sculpt in here in the voxel room, and that is voxel mode or surface mode. So these new brushes exist here in surface mode. You actually have some new tools such as subdivide, angulator, smoother, and you also have a new type of fill brush. It's called the loot brush, and it's more like working with caulking or some type of sealant. And also want to point out that if you check out the feature demo playlist on the YouTube channel, you'll find videos that explain these in greater detail. The subdivide, angulator, smoother, and also the loot brush as well. Okay. And also want to point out that subdivide, angulator, and smoother typically work with either a brush selection or a selection used with one of these draw modes such as rectangular, polygonal lasso, freeform, elliptical, or spline. And once you make your selection, again you subdivide, then that selection will stay in place until you actually clear it. So let me switch to subdivide and you can clear the selection here. You can also use control D uh, to clear it just as you would in Photoshop. Okay, so the other thing I want to point out in this addendum is that you have some new presets that were donated by a forum regular. He goes by the name of Artman and he worked uh, hand in hand with Andrew to improve the overall behavior and feel of the brushes here in surface mode. And uh, you have some new options as well and we'll look at that here shortly. But the first thing I want to do is point out how you can get your hands on these new beta releases. Let's go to the 3D Coat main page. Under the download section, if you click on stable release, you'll get the last one that Andrew deemed to be relatively stable. So this is not where we want to go. We actually want to go to the community tab here under form. Okay, and then we want to go to new releases and betas. Here in the V4 Beta Experimental, we want to go to the very first page. And this is where you will find the latest builds and you'll see some release notes as well. Okay, so the other thing I want to show while I'm here is if you don't see Artman's presets loaded by default, they should, but if for some reason they are not. And also find sometimes when you clear your presets, click clear all, uh, and you reinstall 3D Coat or maybe a new build, you may not see anything here, so you may have to load these manually, and I want to show how you can do that. So we're back here at the 3D Coat main page. Under the Download tab, you have Resources. Here under the Brushes section, you can see Artman Presets. And if you click on this little thumbnail here, you'll see an image that shows some of these presets. What we want to do is click on download, save it wherever you can easily find it, and then once you're back in 3D Coat, you can go to File, Install Extension, download that. It'll say it's recommended to exit 3D Coat. You can do this or not. Sometimes it will go ahead and load it so you don't necessarily have to uh, exit the application. And some of these are just presets with just general settings. For example, the pose tool with a freeform lasso selected and so on. And you can always add your own by saving presets here. In this case, I already have a file where I've stored my own presets. If I go ahead and add the presets from a particular file, it's going to stack it on top of what I have here. So, let me go ahead and add presets from file. My documents, 3D Coat, I have a directory that should be loaded by default, brush presets. So, I'll go ahead and load that. And you can see it loads all those on top of what I already had. 
And I just want to mention in a nutshell that when you switch to voxel mode, you should see at the very top it switch. So let me go to another layer here and I want to switch to voxel mode. And you'll notice it switches here. And this is because I, I chose to uncheck show all presets. But if I check that, you'll notice it's divided into different sections. Okay, and you can see how long and extensive this is. Keep that in mind. We'll go back to the other layer. Or you can see the preset panel update here. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's look at some of the brush improvements. Many of these have options here. Let's go to clay. And you'll see some new options in the toolbar. The main thing I want to bring to your attention is the normal sampling. You can hover over this particular part of the toolbar and it will give you a tooltip explaining in greater detail. So let me go ahead and try to create a few small ridges here to try and demonstrate uh, exactly how this works. I just want to turn that down. I'm just going to create a couple ridges here. And while I'm doing this, I want to point out if you have buildup check, let's uh, let's leave this checked. And if I just make individual strokes, one on top of the other, I can see it building up. And if I uncheck that, and again make just individual strokes, wow, it's pretty strong. I have to bring the strength down a bit. But you can see it's building up as well. Why is that? Well, this builds up with the same stroke. Meaning, if you hold down your stylus or your mouse button and just continue going back and forth, it will build up. Okay, so let me uncheck that. And now, if I continue pressing while I'm brushing back and forth you can see it maintains a static height so that's very helpful if you want this type of effect okay. so I'm going to do a few times here All right. okay so let's look at this normal sampling here Let's say I want to go across these ridges here. Sometimes you may want 3D Coat to actually follow and build on top of the contour as you go. Sometimes you actually want to go just simply through it. You don't necessarily want to build on top. So let's leave the normal sampling down. I'm just going to go ahead and stroke through here. And you can see the result. It tries to follow as you're brushing the contour. Now, if I should bring the value up considerably, let's go all the way up to 200%. I'm going to undo to give me some space here. Now you'll notice a big difference. It's actually taking a larger sampling and it's trying to average it out. So that means it's not going to be as pronounced uh, in trying to follow the contours. It's going to try to just plow its own little path there. As you can see. Let me try a different brush alpha. And if I check build up I might get a different result. Yeah. With build up checked, you'll notice you get a considerably different effect. Okay, let me uncheck that. Quite a bit different. And so, again, sometimes this may be what you want. You may want it to follow, and other times you may want it to just kind of plow straight through in this way. Okay, so um, 
yeah let's go ahead now and I'm going to undo a few times and I want to point out some options for the flatten brush that you may want to uh, be made aware of and that is uh, plain softness oops I'm sorry I need to check the appropriate layer I don't know how I accidentally got off that okay so as you can see it's a little bit rough and to smooth the brush stroke out a bit all I need to do is increase the plain softness value bring it to 100 percent doesn't seem to have much of an effect but if I bring it down to nothing you can see it's very crude and very harsh let's bring that up to about 30 or 40 percent okay and using different brush alphas you'll get a slightly different slightly different result as well let's turn build up off and it's a little bit more predictable okay, let's try a different brush alpha here so you definitely want to experiment a little with some of these brushes and store different variations in your preset panel you can also update a preset so let's say you make changes to a preset that you've already created or one of Artman's one of the default presets if you want to update that you right click and just choose update preset and you have some different options here as to what to store in your preset as well you can add to the quick panel and what that does is when you hit the space bar much like in Maya with your hotbox you can store both presets and other tools here in your quick access panel so this is like bringing the tool panel right to your cursor okay. this allows you to if you like you can actually collapse the tool panel and just use your space bar to bring the tools up as you need them give you a little bit more real estate I can bring that back up by clicking this little arrow icon one last thing I want to mention about the preset panel is you also have this new option called textual look and what that means is sometimes you may not want these icons you may want just the names to make it a little bit cleaner so let's try that option okay so here you have it just the names only okay so I wanna undo that And again, you can use this presets panel for any room that you're in. Okay, um, let me undo a few times here. You also uh, happen to have this option here, not to lift edges. Uh, I've never really used this particular option, but you can see you get a, a different result. Considerably different result. Uh, especially if you choose build up okay so don't lift edges it works a little bit more like what you might expect and check build up Let me undo a few times here. Okay, let me show the loop brush just uh, very quickly. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the fill brush just to show a contrast. And you can see it does pretty much what you expect it to do under most conditions. I'll undo. Let's try the loop brush here. And it's pressure sensitive so if you press lightly you'll get a, a slight effect 
press harder, you get a more pronounced effect. Okay, so it's almost like using a, uh, a caulking gun of sorts. Change the smoothing. You can also change the depth curve. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a, a few points here. I can right click once and I'll have a hard edge. Right click a second time and I'll have a B spline. Right click a third time and it'll bring me right back to a standard spline where the point is right on the curve. Okay, so right click twice and I have a softer curve here. Right, okay. I'll choose a more solid brush alpha. I'll choose maybe an absolute type of draw mode. And it's much more predictable this way. Okay, so with that I might choose to actually create a preset with this. Oops. So I'll choose Add Preset. And I can see it's named by the tool that I'm using, but I could change that if I like. And let's say I wanted to change the name actually to something else, maybe Fill, to, uh, fill Number 2 or something. Uh, what I could do is right click and choose Duplicate okay and rename the duplicated tool to whatever I like and then the original which is hard-coded I could choose to hide it and if I want to bring it back up later on I can choose show all tools in this section so very handy if you want to change the the tools that you have here okay so we have uh, other videos that go into this a little bit deeper but uh, yeah, we can go ahead and change this. Let's say I can double click and underscore strong. And I can go over here to the left side where the icon is and I see this little move icon. I can now move it wherever I like. Probably would want to place it near the uh, fill presets I already have. So, uh, with that being done, let's sample some of these brushes. I'm going to undo a few times here.